Hello and welcome to another video on grade 11 biology and the topic that we are going to cover in this video is biomolecules. Now we have so far covered the different parts of a eukaryotic cell as well as the different parts of a prokaryotic cell and now it's time to understand what kind of molecules make up our cells and the different parts of our body. And before we get started don't forget uh, to visit our website perfect-scores.com and to mail us any feedback or suggestions at perfectscores89 at gmail.com. Now there are lots of elements present in the human body. For example, if I'm supposed to give you a basic idea of what kind of elements are there, we have hydrogen in us, we have carbon, oxygen, we even have nitrogen, sulfur, sodium, a bit of calcium and even magnesium in us. So these are the major elements. Maximum we have oxygen which is close to about 65%. So 65% of the human body is made up of oxygen. About 18.5% is made up of carbon. And then 3.3% is made up of nitrogen. So these are the three most commonly found elements in our body. Then hydrogen is there but that's just about 0.5%. Uh, sulfur is there that is 0.3%. Sodium is 0.2 percent calcium is about 1.5 percent and magnesium is again just about 1.1 percent so that's the composition of the human body and that's a comparison and and these elements are not just uh, present in the same form that I've written they're present as ions so sodium for example is present in the form of this ion potassium is also present in the form of iron Calcium as well. Uh, similarly, magnesium is present like this. Uh, water is present and that is how hydrogen and oxygen are present. And lots of other compounds are there. For example, sodium chloride is there. Uh, calcium carbonate is present in us. And then we have some phosphates in us as well. And sulfates as well. So lots of different compounds and ions are present. And that is what is going to be the gist of this video. Let's start with the first kind of biomolecules which is amino acids. So what happens is uh, that in amino acids there is a same carbon known as an alpha carbon. And on this alpha carbon two different constituents are there. One is an amino group and one is an acid group. So that's how the name is given amino acids. Now these are nothing but substituted methanes. So substituted methanes. And there are four substituent groups that occupy the four valency positions. And these four groups that occupy the four valency positions of this alpha carbon, you have hydrogen, then you have a carboxyl group, and then you have an amino group and finally a variable group that is known as an R group. Now based on the nature of this R group there are many different kinds of amino acids. But these R groups that are present in proteins these are just about 20 in number. Now the R group in these proteinous, uh, proteinaceous amino acids it could be a hydrogen and if this R group if this is a hydrogen then the amino acid is known as glycine. If this R group is let's say a methyl group, then that amino acid will be known as alanine. If the R group is made up of hydroxymethyl, hydroxymethyl in that case this will be known as serine. So as you can see there are lots of amino acids that can vary according to the structure of this R group. And I'll give you an example of these three amino acids. So these three are examples. So here you have the hydrogen so that is glycine. Here you have the methyl group so that is the alanine. And here you have the hydroxymethyl group and that makes it serine. So that is the structure of these amino acids. Now whatever difference is there in the properties, in the chemical and physical properties of the amino acids is basically the difference of the amino group 
the carboxyl group and this R functional group. Now based on numbers of amino acids and the carboxyl groups, there are different kinds of um, amino acids. Some amino acids are acidic in nature. For example, glutamic acid. When more of the acidic group is there. While others can be basic in nature, for example, lysine. And yet others can be neutral in nature. For example, valine. Now similarly, there are lots of uh, aromatic amino acids also. For example, tyrosine. Tyrosine and then phenylalanine or even tryptophan. These are known as aromatic amino acids. Now, one particular property of amino acids is the ionizable nature of the NH2 and the COOH groups. These are both ionizable and that gives rise to a zwitter ionic form which I'll show through a diagram. So, let's suppose this is the initial amino acid. It changes to the zwitter ionic form. And let me draw it like this. The CH is still there. The R group is still there. But this carboxyl group, it loses one of the hydrogens. And this is known as a zwitter ionic form. And this further can change after one loss of hydrogen from here because the charges are now, uh, let's say, one positive and one negative charge is there. So one hydrogen moves from here. And this becomes CH, the R group, and the COO negative group. So this is the change. Coming to the next kind of compounds that are lipids, which are also very, very important. Now lipids are nothing but they are forms of fats. They are water insoluble. They can either be a simple fatty acid. Now a fatty acid has a carboxyl group attached to an R group. So a carboxyl group is attached to an R group. The R group, it can either be a methyl or it can be an ethyl or it can be some higher number also. It can range from one carbon to 19 carbons. For example, palmitic acid, it has 16 carbons. So I'll note down that information as well. Palmitic acid, it has 16 of these carbon atoms. Uh, Arachidonic acid has 20 carbon atoms, including this carboxyl um, atom. So arachidonic acid it has 20 of these carbons. Now these fatty acids these can be either saturated or unsaturated. So the fatty acids, they can be saturated or unsaturated. Now what is the difference between them? The saturated do not have a double bond, while unsaturated have the double bond between the two carbon atoms. One another example of a simple lipid is glycerol which is basically trihydroxypropane and I'll draw the diagram of that as well so CH2 with CH with CH2 and they have this hydroxy component so this is nothing but glycerol let's do some more examples of these lipids that is fats and oils so that is palmitic acid as I told you just in the previous slide that palmitic acid, it has 16 carbons, including the carboxyl one. So here is the carboxyl one, 14 of these in a chain, and the next one is over here. So total 16 carbons, that is a fatty acid. This is glycerol, that is trihydroxypropane. This structure over here, that you can see that is a triglyceride. And these R1s, R2, R3 that you can see over here, here and here. These are the different functional groups and these are the fatty acids.
So R1, R2, R3, these are the fatty acids and this on a whole, it becomes a triglyceride. Now the next uh, material, the next molecule that I'm drawing, it looks a little bit like a triglyceride, but it's actually a phospholipid and you can see the change that happens here. Now instead of a carbon like I had in the triglyceride, I'm going to have a phosphate over here. So that is the difference over here. So two of these molecules and then there's a nitrogen molecule to which three of these CH3s are attached. So this is a phospholipid and this one specially is known as lecithin that has a phosphate around it. And then there's an example of cholesterol. This is, uh, the pro this is the diagram of cholesterol. So you have three benzene rings here and then there are five carbon atoms in this one. And this is example of cholesterol. So these are the common fats and lipids that are found in the human body. Now sometimes in living organisms, there are lots of carbon compounds in which rings are found. That means heterocyclic rings. And most of these are nitrogen bases. That is adenine, for example, which is found in DNA. And then guanine. Similarly, cytosine. uracil and thymine and when these are attached to a sugar they are also known as nucleosides and if uh, let me put it down over here if they are attached to a sugar they are known as nucleosides if a phosphate group is also attached to the sugar they are called nucleotides if they have a sugar and a phosphate in that case they are known as nucleotides now adenosine guanosine thymidine uridine and cytidine these are nucleosides so these are all the nucleosides that have only sugar and in nucleotides you can see adenylic acid thymidylic acid, guanylic acid, uridylic acid and cytidylic acid. So these are the different acids and let's just go through the structure of these for a bit. So we'll discuss the structures of these three kinds of compounds, the nitrogen base and then after addition of sugar, the nucleoside and then after addition of phosphate, the nucleotide. So this is the nitrogen base of adenine. This is adenosine that has the sugar group and it also has the adenine over here and this is the extra phosphate group that has been added to this molecule of adenosine and now it becomes the adenylic acid. Similarly, we'll do one more example that is of uracil. So this is uracil which is a pyrimidine and now let's see how it's converted into a nucleoside. And this is how it's converted into the nucleoside uridine. Now you can see the similarity between adenosine and uridine. Uh, the, just the addition of this sugar has been there, which is the CH2OH with oxygen and the hydroxy groups. And this is where the original nitrogen base is added. So that is all that you need to know about these different compounds that are there in the human body till now. And this is just a basic introduction. In the next video onwards, we are actually going to start off with the primary and the secondary metabolites. And slowly we are going to discuss different bio uh, macromolecules, the different proteins that are there, nucleic acids, polysaccharides, structure and everything. So this is basically an introductory video just to give you uh, information on what all are we supposed to cover under biomolecules. So this is the first part, part one. And keep watching out for more such parts. And thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to visit our website for more related videos and to share your valuable suggestions on this Gmail address. Thank you so much for watching this video.